Hello. Today I will be showing you some important editing tasks in Logic Pro 9, including uh, trimming, separating, crossfading, uh, merging, cycling, zooming, all the uh, necessary and important tasks when you're when you're editing. So the first first one we're going to go over here is uh, trimming. Trimming is probably one of the most uh, essential tasks in uh, audio editing, in that it will be done a lot to um, you know adjust uh, performances and uh, audio regions based on the takes. Um, as you can see in this track I have pre-recorded here, um, it starts you know right off on the downbeat, but then you know you have this extra here at the at the end of the uh, recording performance. So what we want to do is trim that down. Trimming is very simple. All you have to do is uh, hover your cursor over the bottom right or left corners, and then you can trim, uh, press down, and then slide back and forth to apply your trimming. Um, next, we have separating or splitting tracks, uh, which is essentially where you have one track here, and we want to split that into two regions. So generally what you would do is you're listening, uh, maybe you'll you'll hear a part that needs to be cut out, or maybe you want to change up a performance or something like that, then you would adjust your playhead where you would like to make the cut and then make the cut. And there's a couple ways to do this in log Logic. You can adjust your playhead to where you want to make the cut, and you can right click and uh, come down and hit split by playhead, and then it splits it into two separate regions. Or uh, we could uh, just click split by playhead right up top here in the toolbar. Um, or there you can do the key command, which is the uh, backslash tool. So once uh, you split tracks and, and move your regions around, um, if you were to butt another one up to this, you would want to apply a crossfade. And uh, applying a crossfade is very simple. And um, uh, to do that, what we're going to want to do is zoom in. So to zoom in, we can do that uh, a couple ways. We can come up into the upper right area of our arrange window here. And in this area, we have uh, two menus for tools here. And these two menus apply to your left click um, and your command plus left click. So <clears throat> it's, it's actually very, very helpful for allowing you to have access to two different tools at one time. So as you can see, I have my pointer tool for my left click, so I can just click and select things. Um, in this window here, I can set my command left click, which I already have set to the fade tool. But let's go ahead and set it to the zoom tool since we want to zoom in. So for that, I'm going to hold down the command key, and you'll see the cursor change to a magnifying glass. And then I'll just select the region that I want to zoom in on. And then bam, here I am. You can see the... Uh, the tracks and having the zoom tool on the command uh, left click option uh, makes it very simple for me to zoom in and zoom out but then still have access to my pointer as soon as I let go of the command so now that we have that I'll come up here and I'll change that from the zoom tool to the fade tool and then uh, same deal hold down the command button and then highlight the section I want to have the crossfade on and bam there it is. Now with that being done, we can zoom back out. And I'll hold down Command, and bam, there we go. And there's another way to zoom as well. Uh, you can do that with uh, a key command, uh, which is uh, Control and Option. I'll hold those down, and then you can zoom. And that's uh, a lot quicker than actually coming up here to the, the uh, Command Click menu. And once you have your... Um, you know, your crossfades or any type of editing you have where you have gone through and separated regions and you want to uh, put those back together. Once you're all done, uh, that is very, very simple to do. Just select all the regions you want to merge together. And then you can just right click on on the uh, selected regions and choose merge. Or you can press uh, control equal sign and then come up and say non-contiguous audio regions require the creation of a new audio file, which is essentially what you want, but keep in mind this is a uh, destructive, so you will not be able to go back and edit that crossfade that you see on the screen, screen right here uh, once you hit create. So if you're 100% sure, merge them down, hit create, and then there you are, you have a completely new audio file 
uh, with the edits there. Now let's talk about the grid. The grid in Logic Pro is represented by these vertical lines you see, and these indicate measures and uh, beats as well. So um, it's very useful when editing regions and moving things around as um, it gives you a visual representation of essentially where you are in the track um, and how to line things up correctly. But sometimes you need uh, complete control over where you go and you don't want the, uh, the bars showing there or logic to be having any control on where your tracks are snapping to. Um, so real easy to turn that off in the arrange area local menu bar up here under the uh, view option there is the grid and you just click that and those vertical lines go away. Um, come back, click it again, and they come back. Another way to do that is to hold the control button on your keyboard and push the letter G. And those will toggle them off and on. Another very important uh, feature and task in, in Logic Pro would be cycling. Cycling would be very useful uh, for you to, to repeat a section uh, for some critical listening to, to listen for specific areas or specific notes to see if anything needed to be changed. It's actually extremely easy to turn on in Logic. Uh, there's two ways to do it. Uh, down here in the transport bar, uh, there is a button specifically for cycle. You click that and it'll turn on this green bar up top and that is your cycle region which you can adjust the length of by uh, just like trimming an audio region. Uh, you just hover over the, hover over the edge and um, click and slide back and forth to set your region and then um, it will cycle through it. Another way to turn this on is just to click up in this numbered area above the uh, bar ruler or in the bar ruler. Uh, just click on and off and you're good to go. Another important task um, while audio editing is markers. Markers are extremely important in helping you identify uh, where you're at in your project while you uh, may be recording a song, editing a song, and putting it together. Um, as you build tracks in your, your DAW, um, your grid, your arrange area is going to fill up and get bigger and bigger and bigger depending on how long the track is. Um, so it really helps to have markers distinguish where you're looking at in your song, where, um, where your regions are being placed and whatnot. Um, so let me turn that off here. Markers is found in the Global Tracks drop-down menu in the upper left of your arrange area. Uh, there is a marker section. And uh, placing a marker is very, very easy. Just scroll your playhead to uh, where you would like and uh, click the Create button. Markers you would use for distinguishing things like verses, um, uh, intros, choruses, outros, bridges, you know, basic sections of a song. Um, but they can also be used to identify maybe problem points or um, whatever you want, really. And that's that's one of the beautiful things about markers. Um, so I'm going to make a marker for the intro. So I'm going to slide my playhead to the very beginning of the track, and I'm going to click Create. And it's going to throw in a marker here and uh, just named Marker 1. Um, I want to distinguish that as my intro, so I'm going to double-click on the marker. And it's going to pop up with a window for me to change the name, and I will type that as intro and there we go uh, you can also edit the markers over here in uh, the right hand pane this is actually under the lists menu right up top here you click lists um, it'll pop open you have events uh, tempo signature but you also have markers and in here you can click on the marker see its position um, see its length and you can also edit the name down here so I'm going to create another marker for the verse. So let's pretend that uh, right here would be the start of a verse. So I'm adjusting my playhead and I'm going to create another marker and double click and name it as uh, verse one. All right. And also just uh, to help out here, I'm going to split the, the track again. There we go. All right. So I got split. I got the track split. So let's pretend this is just the intro and this is the verse. So having the, the markers there is a, is a quick representation, but as you can see, they're a little hard to, to distinguish from each other. So uh, one way that we can, can uh, correct that is to color them. And we can color these markers uh, very simply. We come up uh, to the colors palette up in the upper right-hand corner, and then you have a, uh, a window here 
uh, full of many, many colors. And you can choose, I'll just go with uh, orange for the intro there. And then, as you can see, the block changed to orange. And then uh, for the verse, let's, let's try green, I guess. So now we have, woo, that is a bright green. Um, yeah, so that right there, now you can see that it's a very distinguished visual uh, difference between the intro and the verse. Um, another thing you can do is also change the color of your regions as well to match your, your uh, markers or to uh, differ differentiate instruments. So basically just kind of color coding your project to, um, you know, what is, is more efficient for you to be able to visually distinguish what parts of the songs you're currently working in and be able to quickly jump back to.